we are back today to start kicking some ass like we do in the <laughs> NFL show. TCU Oklahoma State, we steamed that under, but it moved too much. One that we steam that they're still value, that's the Kansas, Kansas State under. That's my best bet for the week. So what ends up happening when you see moves from seven to nine, it is not necessarily a true move. What it is is something that's called in the industry a teaser blocker. We see it all the time, week in, week out. One call by the ref changes the outcome. So you can't be result-based. You gotta focus on did you place good bets? And it's very easy to know that. Look at your ticket, what's the betting line? And then where did it close? Did you beat the closing number? If you did and you could continue to do that, you're a mathematical certainty to turn a profit long term. Marco mentioned the revenge factor. Last time uh, they played Michigan State, they got actually smacked in the mouth, almost lost by 20 points here. I'm going to take the better defense in this spot. I do think that this is going to be a close game, but as you know, those Big Ten home dogs have been absolutely crushing this year. I asked them, you know, where does this, could we see 56 and a half? Could we see 57? Because at what point do you jump in on the under? Until game day, it's not like you can pick a point where, up. Oh, that's the number where it's going to turn because it's the mainstream public in this game taking so much money. I don't think anybody actually can really pinpoint hey, when is the spot where it's going to come back to the under? So that's the big question mark I have. Marcus Mariota was a quarterback for the first six games, and Marcus Mariota wasn't good at quarterback. And then ever since, they've, if you do nothing but take out the Mariota games, just look at the Tannehill games for Tennessee, you get a very different statistical profile. You get an elite offense, okay, instead of an okay offense. Like the New York Jets, teams that are now on the road, and they scored 14 or fewer points before their bye, have gone 27, 8, and 1 against the spread, 77.1%. Yes, it's an ugly play on the Jets, but again, teams have that week to recoup. You can look at the one yard per carry less by Todd Gurley, but the bottom line is, where is the stretching of the field this year from Jared Goff? And the stretching, Robert Woods last year, I'm telling you, he was in my fantasy team, and this guy would go out there and get you know, he wasn't Tyree Kill, but I mean, he was literally probably was number monster. two. Yeah, he was a for, monster for and, months. And that would actually bring the, the strong safety back. It would bring a middle linebacker back. And that's probably what helped Todd Gurley get that extra one yard. What happens is at a sports book, if you bet a, a, a game that is Barcelona minus one and a half, minus two, and you bet $100, $50 of what you're betting is on minus one and a half, $50 is on minus two. So if Barcelona, win, Barcelona wins a game by two, you're gonna push the two, you're gonna win the one and a half. So you're gonna sign up for the Super Contest and Reboot, and you're gonna be allowing three entries in each this year, which exactly. is awesome. Exactly, last year we allowed two, and now we're upping it to three, so just giving the uh, public uh, another opportunity to get in that top 100. How many, in the next five years, how many more states, what would you put the number at? Oh that you think well, we would. I know I, I know that everybody's frosting at the mouth for California, so I know that that's a, a cluster mess. Well, uh, by the end of this year, there's already going to be over 20. So five years, I'd say the over and under, 38 and a half. Michigan State lost this game when D'Antoni decided that, you know what, I'm just going to live in the past and I'm not going to progress, I'm not going to evolve as football has evolved. He still runs an offense that would make uh, Lombardi thrilled. One thing that does concern me from the K-State side is they allow six yards per carry. Baylor runs the ball six yards per carry. That's what Baylor's going to try to do. They did that last week and had success. So, uh, you know, the only team the K-State has really kept under four and a half yards per carry has been Bowling Green one of the worst teams in college football. I wanted to share with you guys a hockey bet that I placed this morning. The Oilers Panthers over six and a half at minus 115. And I also like the first period over, but it's a little more juice that I'm not gonna lay at minus 145. Talk to me about the Celtics though. It's creeping up the double digits here. You okay with that? Yeah, you already spoke on, on Detroit. Uh, the Celtics, well, we saw last game, no smart, no Hayward. Mm -hmm. They're still okay as long as they have Brown, Tatum, and Kimba. Mm -hmm. And Detroit, um, they're now missing Blake Griffin and Luke Kennard. That's a lot of offense going for Detroit. Right. So it's really hard for me to see them keeping up here. Well, I, I don't think the offense gets enough respect for the run game because you have three guys that are over yeah. 600 yards with Mostert, Coleman, and Breida, and you don't have that one go-to back like Aaron Jones. If Holtzman could survive that first round, I, start, I think he starts to take over the fight. I, I like the, the size advantage with Holtzman. 
Um, I, I don't think Miller's going to be able to take him down and sub him as easily like he has the last two fights. So I think Holtzman offers some value there at minus 150. I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to everybody that watches this show because I get DMs on Twitter, people messaging us or shouting all of us out that are on the show every week. And uh, it's definitely appreciated. I try and, you know, DM people back and uh, tell them their time is appreciated for watching our show and answer any questions. For me being right now on this platform, I just want to personally say thanks.